let's talk a little, a little bit about EV Productions first. Uh, For sure. How did that come to be, first of all? Um, actually, it was it was it came out of the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. I I've been looking for work a lot, as have a lot of other actors, and so me and my friends, we all sat down. We were like, we should make something happen. We should make it happen all together. So um, I founded this company with with two of my female friends, and uh, and we've been putting up stuff. This is our first main production altogether, but we've been having little readings and going through plays and stuff like that and meeting on our own. And this is our first production that's come to fruition. Awesome. So, you know, leading into Indian summer, uh, can you, give me a little background on the story because it seems like it, it's a, a comedy coming of age story. Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, so Indian Summer, actually, one of my friends did a scene from it for a showcase at some point and sort of fell in love with the writing. So it is a comedy coming of age story. It's, uh, it's also focused a lot on the parallels between life and death. The, the grandfather is very much a narrator throughout the whole thing. And um, he makes these, these comments on, you know, watching young people in the beginning of life, whereas he's probably nearing the end of his um, and it also it focuses somewhat on the uh, the indigenous people's land and, and how that land is being treated by people who come in and take over it. And um, and that's the title of Indian Summer as well. And so it's it's it mixes comedy in with a little bit of philosophy and a little bit of social commentary <clears throat> commentary. Awesome. So why choose this as the first play first main production for EV productions? Um, Honestly, we just, my director and I, we fell in love with the writing right off the bat. It's, it's lyrical, it's poetic, it's truthful and honest. Um, it's, a very, it's a very innocent play and we just, we fell in love with doing a small love story. It's also a small cast. So we, we figured we'd bite off a very um, chewable amount for our first production. So it's only four people and we have a crew of less than 10 people. So it was, uh, a sizable enough cast where we thought we could put up a really a really solid production with what we had. Awesome. Uh, and as of uh, right now, you guys are in rehearsals. Uh, how are things looking? Um, how how do you see this uh, playing out? How, um, what can people expect when they go out to watch this? Um, I see it playing out really well. Yeah, we have our dress rehearsal tonight, and we open tomorrow. Um, I think people are going to be, I think people are going to be, um, in a whole different world. We have this beautiful soundscape by our sound designer and we have these, uh, beautiful Rothko-esque paintings that are up on the stage that are very sunset-like. And I think everyone's just going to be transported to this, this beautiful little bubble on a beach in Rhode Island. And I think, I think it's going to be very nostalgic. And I also think it's going to be a very heartwarming experience. Definitely. And, um, with a lot of uh, big productions, uh, especially when it comes to movies, you know, people expect, you know, huge things and they don't appreciate much of the stage productions anymore. Um, what, bring, what makes this play stand out from anything else that you could possibly see right now? I think, I think it really uh, embraces that word play. I think we've, we've come up with a, a way for this production to really just be a sense of play and, and be very childlike. And um, I think there's a big difference between theater and film out here. And mm -hmm. uh, theater realism is a very different feeling than film realism. And so having those, those staged moments and having people, you know, go into a scene with a certain soundscape behind it and have it be this dramatized version of what the scene is versus what people would do on film, which is make it very photorealistic. And, and both of those are, are wonderful ways to, um, to express yourself. But I think with this particular production, we, we really take the theatricality up and, um, and we utilize it really well. And so I'm excited for people to, to sort of see that artistic expression as well. Definitely, I, I know. I really enjoyed stage productions. It's a different experience than watching a film. Yeah. What was your introduction to stage productions and plays and why did you choose to follow this as a career? Oh, I, um, I have been, I've been singing since I was born practically. And uh, I did my first musical when I was in middle school, when I was 11 years old. And I just, I fell in love with 
with everything happening around it and the costumes and the staging and figuring out what your characters are doing and, and how you can express what the characters are doing to the audience in, in a way that's gonna come across uh, theatrically. And so I've been doing this for, for years and years and years. And then I just, I fell in love with it. And I know that a lot of people come out here and they're like, oh, well, my backup career was this, but I ended up acting, I've, I've never had a backup career. I've just known that this is what I was gonna do and this is what I wanted to do since, since I was really little. And um, I went to college for musical theater. I also went to college for, uh, for acting for film and I ended up out here and I just, I've been pursuing this my whole life. Awesome. Um, uh, even though this is a local production for Los Angeles, how can people support the arts, uh, you know, support theater groups much like yours that, you know, are trying to give voices to people who want to try this out, who, who want to, you know, give something back to the world? Um, honestly, with, with this production and, and finding a way to get it out there, um, it's my first time putting something like this up. So what I was doing was going around to just local coffee shops and bookstores and places like that and asking them to, to advertise for us. And, uh, you know, there are community tables with little postcards and, and billboards, you know, paying attention to those and, and going and seeking it out in your community is really, really helpful because a lot of us, you know, we can't put a billboard on Hollywood Boulevard, unfortunately, but, you know, we can, we can do that stuff locally. And so, you know, paying attention to your, to your local, you know, that sign that's posted on the, on the telephone pole near your house. And then also, I mean, we are collaborating with the Loft Ensemble Theater. They're the theater we're renting from. And so checking out your local theaters and, and seeing what new productions are going up there is a, is a great way to help. And and asking your friends, you know, LA is full of actors. I'm, I'm sure they all know each other at least three degrees in separation, right? And so asking your friends say, hey, do you know any local theater productions? Should we check out the Pasadena Playhouse? Should we check out some of these smaller uh, like comedy places up, up and down um, Lancashire and, and NoHo, you know? Going to your local theater productions or theater houses and, and making sure that you check in with them if, if you wanna see more, yeah. Oh, yeah. What has been some of the big, uh, bigger obstacles for you guys to, uh, to put together uh, Indian Summer? Um, because it's such a small production and, and we have such a small budget, we've had to do some really creative thinking with what we do with our money and, and how, we, how we utilize the, the people that are in our life. We've, um, we've reached out to different colleges and, uh, and recent graduates of people local in the area who are just getting out of school and looking to get something on their resume. Um, so we've had to think creatively there. It's been a big challenge to figure out also how everyone you know works. Cause obviously when, when you're friends with everyone it, you don't necessarily work the same way. And so um, figuring out how to collaborate effectively with you know, even a group of maybe 10 people has been, has been a challenge but it's been one I think we've overcome really successfully. That's awesome. I, I like in the independent productions because just like indie film they find creative ways to get around stuff. And yeah. you end up having such amazing content come out of, out of it. Um, how is the collab collaborative process with you guys? Uh, how have actors contributed? How have directors contributed? Um, the collaborative process, it's been, it's been pretty incredible. I mean, always, always with, uh, with directors and actors, you know, it's always a marriage between the two, you know, <laughs> and, um, and we also, we have a range of ages and a range of experience levels in our cast as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's been, it's been really fun to see what each person brings to the table. And whereas someone may have really strong improv skills, someone else has done a million theater productions and, and knows the script and knows how to, to execute line by line. And then, you know, our older actor, Shaney has just been in the arts for 40 years and just has all this knowledge of, of, expression so watching that come together and watching our director really use all of our strengths and and pull the best performance out of each of us has been really special awesome well congratulations on having this put on i can't wait to go see it and uh, i hope the best for you guys yeah absolutely